Reach Films in with the first comment. Time to parte. P A R T A Y exclamation point. Welcome everybody to another episode of Cameron Flask. This is episode ninety nine. Believe it or not, Ben. I don't. Yourself. I really don't believe it. No. <laughs> Someone oh, in dip. the chat. Uh, I don't know. I feel like I should do a prize for the first person to give us an accurate number of shows. Yeah. I'll have to think of something. Okay. But, uh, but yeah, we should figure out what, because we we can't just do a 100th special if it's not the actual 100th. That's true. We may already be, like, on episode 110, based on what Ben thinks. I would say we're somewhere somewhere north of 100 now, but... I, there was a little bit of double numbering went on early on, and I I know Jem claims that he's he's fettled it and it's all back in sync now, but I'm I'm still not a hundred percent convinced. I'm too I mean, back in the dark ages, man. Just taking a trip down memory lane, <laughs> there were like it was average for one at least one show a month just to not happen because we couldn't make it work. Like yeah. Well, they would all start. Of... They would start, but then within I guess seconds. Post Google, post yes. Hangouts. Yeah, uh, Sky, yeah Hangouts Patrick, was welcome, welcome. The post, yeah, it was pretty reliable. I love how we started with thirteen people and we're down to nine. So they're like, "Oh, <laughs> I showed up at the wrong place. This place sucks. <laughs> this is ridiculous." Well, a minute in, and uh, we might hit thirteen people with with the show. We're twelve already. We're killing it wow. today. Well, we've been gone for a couple of weeks, everybody, so welcome back. Uh, we were actually supposed to have a show last week, but something happened in the state of Oregon called an ice storm. It happens about every 10, 15, 20 years. We were out for over six days without power here. I was running everything Jeez. off of a 2K putt-putt, and uh, we survived, but it wasn't pretty. When you're on well water, you can't flush your toilet. You have no hot water. Uh, you're on a septic system. Let's just say it was messy, but we made it through, and I didn't lose a day of oh, work. But hang on, hang on, hang on. A generator and, and you had well water. This is a whole. This is a much rosier picture than you were painting Wait a to me when no, you were. No, 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 no. I did not. I we have well water, which <laughs> means that we had no water, Ben. Meaning we have well water. The only way for that to work is if you have a thirty amp, you know, tie-in to something. Our generator was running my refrigerator for part of the day, a freezer for the rest of the day, and occasionally I would plug in a propane heater to warm up the house. We didn't, we couldn't flush our toilets. I was getting uh, water from our neighbors out of five-gallon containers that they lent to us. So it wasn't that pretty, you know. It was, it was messy. Let me just say. <sighs> All right. Wow. Thanks. Thank you for thank you for understanding, Ben. I really appreciate that. <laughs> your empathy. Your empathy I, I, is your empathy is overwhelming at the moment. No, what kidding. What was? Well, I think I've expressed empathy when you sent me the message. What did I reply? Uh, no off. power and water. What no, did no. I? No. What did you I say? I think I asked you if you were drinking your own urine yet. That's right, you did. So that was in line with what I'm getting right now. So there you go. It's not Bear Grylls over here. We're not that. It wasn't that bad. All right. Um, good. Andres is having a pale ale from local home brewer. Very nice. Uh, where is that local home brewer? The trees are pretty, though, all iced over. Yeah, well, you know. Mm. Hey, Curtis. Nice to have you. Nice Dude, to have you here. What's going on, there brother? There you go. All right, let's talk about those road wireless go-tos while we're at it. Um, ben acting like Ted Cruz up uh, in Look, here. Sky, we were in the same, <laughs> same position here. It was like the blizzard middle of winter here as well. I just wasn't making a big song and dance about it. That's all. <laughs> Did you lose you know. power? <laughs> no. End of story. Let's see what people are going to be drinking. I lost my in the snow for two weeks until it thawed. Okay, wow. can we have can we have something to drink? Let's go. What what's what are yes. you having to drink? Uh, ben, you should and go yes, first. Yes, Carlos or Carlo. We All just right. started. Yes, we did. I am drinking <laughs> pre primed the the opener. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I'm on a Rioja, a Martinez Buhanda Rioja, no less. So when I was over in England a few weeks ago, I drove over. Ooh. My dad sent me home with a beautiful big case of lovely red wine 
So I'm still mm. working my way Look through that. that. Oh, very nice. Oh. All right, good. Liking it. All right. Caleb, what you got? So this week, I've never had uh, anything from them, but doing a Great Lakes Brewing. Oh, very nice. Oh, look at the little turn uh, there. Porter. Yep. Yep. Love Porter. So that's that's what's happening. Um, I've had a couple of their other ones. I got a, like a mixer, so we'll try a few here on the show, but eh, it's all right. So I haven't tried this one yet, though. Okay. So Again, be be beautiful so labeling. Ready. Thank you. Every week. Us Yanks. Yeah. yeah. Oh, there with the design. There. That said, there are a lot of awful, awful beer labels out there, especially in the like micro, you know, yeah, community. Yeah. Oh, if you just walk down the aisles of Binnie's, you're like, what the heck, man? <laughs> so, yeah, there's some ugly we'll some stuff out there. Really ugly. Yeah. Terrible names. Terrible labels. Doesn't make you want to buy the beer, but there might be the best beer that you've ever had in your life in that bottle. Exactly. You know. Exactly. Unbelievable. It's well, yeah. how about you? Uh, I am having. I am having a. Uh, yeah. Uh, no, we like to look at your pretty face. I am having sent to me by a friend of mine. This is called Uno Dos Tres or One Two Three. This is a organic and Yeho tequila, which I'm going to sip on. I'm going all in right now, and that's what I'm going to have. Wow. It's exceptional, by the way. It's, uh, it's this easily... isn't leftovers from last week, then? No. no. I haven't had some of this in a while. It is a, a very exceptional, very exceptional sipping tequila. It's uh, vanilla notes. I smell a little bit of Ted Cruz in here. I, was, I mean, Ben. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. All right. Cheers. Oh. That was weird. Let's go. I just Cheers, everybody. So, come on, Camille. Coming in right here on the cheers for the booze. Buncha. And to you, Camille. Uh, mm. no, thank you, Camille. Yep. Mm. Very nice. Well, welcome everybody again. Mm. Uh, David's going on set. He's been doing a lot of stuff on set. We got shut down yesterday. I'm doing a production in Florida uh, where I'm directing remotely, and I was telling... Ben and Caleb that uh, came in in the morning and one person had tested positive and guess what happens when that happens? The whole thing shuts down for 10 days. So uh, here we are. It happens. Mm. So mm. since we've been gone, which has been two weeks, Mr. Caleb Pike and Ben Barden, yes, we sir. have had not one, but two new cameras come to market. We knew that that Sony camera was coming in and that was and had been teased, but in true black magic design fashion, they, uh, they blindside. They're the one company that keeps things under wraps. They just sort of they really do. say, we're going to have a thing. And then all of a sudden, Grant just starts pulling out like 25 input A10 minis. And they become, you know, long A10 minis. <laughs> seven, yeah, it just keeps going on. It's like a shark <laughs> slider. You can just buttons. keep adding and adding and adding. It's like a shark slider. You can just keep connecting them together. And, and uh, oh, it's man. getting crazy. But what's fascinating about it is they still haven't um, – <laughs> the comments. They still haven't come out with an SDI model of that, which I find to be quite interesting. Like I thought that was going to be the next thing, but they're just saying oh, – I think they're go. going to they're gonna like – they're going to blow this line wide open. Oh, yeah. Uh, I think they're just getting started, yeah. I think so too. And, um, and then a new camera. <laughs> mm. Curtis is saying, yeah, the new ATEM is almost as long <laughs> and tall as Curtis's. I mean, it's like you could put yeah, the new ATEM next to Curtis and it would probably go up to maybe like his shoulders from the ground. So that's that's how <laughs> Those tall who don't the new ATEM is. <laughs> Curtis is I'm gonna he's, guess he's slightly Curtis taller is than me. Six four to six six. I'd say he's like. supposed to be six six. I feel I like mean, he's really he, tall. He's got a good he's got almost a foot on me for sure. No question. Yeah, because I'm six mm. no and still felt like a small child. I felt like a hobbit next sitting next to him at NAB last time, okay? And I wasn't even right next to him. I was, you know, there was, it's You know, it's tall, tall when across the room you're going like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> he's uh, a great guy. Great channel, great content. So thanks for stopping Absolutely. by. So, um, yeah. Six, seven and on a good day. Oh, wow. Dad. Is that what he dumb. said? Yeah. Jeez. That's amazing. Uh, I knew it. I knew it. So you do have, you have a full foot on me. And uh, yeah. I'm yeah. me. There you go. All right, kids. So what do we talk about first, Ben? Caleb? Which one, what's up first? Uh, Should we talk about that little audio product that was released that also kind of was a blind side? Yeah. And then we'll get into yeah, the cameras. I can't wait to hear your thoughts on mm. this. Um, we should have had Curtis on. These are not them. <clears throat> Wireless it's an update Go to this. Two. Yep. yep. Well, where are we? I don't know. We'll get it. You know these little there it is. ones. But the Wireless Go 2. So let's uh, talk about yeah. what it is. Uh, so... Biggest update is two transmitters, single receiver, as opposed to having to buy two kits like you had to in the past. No funky cables and no, hopefully no RF stuff. Because I or, uh, mm. I know when you had two receivers, which a lot of us did, so you could have two transmitters. Uh, if you had them close to each other, you could have issues. Um, so hopefully all that's gone. Another headlining feature is the uh, recording, onboard recording. Yep. So you can set it up via an app. And I actually messaged Road, and they told me um, in the settings you can choose obviously between compressed and uncompressed or a wave format. Yeah. Uh, seven hours of the kind of uncompressed version, twenty four hours of the compressed. Crazy. And you can set it where it'll auto delete files. So you just turn it on and leave it on. Um, and then to access those, you have to use an app on iOS, but I, or maybe it's on, on the machine because I, I have it on uh, OS X. Um, and then it puts markers down if it detects any signal drop. So if you're doing a production, you can if you, you can just check the file, or if you have an issue, you pull up the file and it has marks for wherever there are issues. Um, what else? What else? Safety track. What, what's this auto delete um, you're talking about? So, so the onboard. I think there's some form of of storage on the device. There's no SD cards or anything like that on the transmitters. So you can mm -hmm. use you can connect them to your computer, have them uh, record on the transmitters, and you can have them auto delete. As it, let's say you have it set to the seven hours max of uncompressed audio. When you hit seven hours, it'll start deleting the oldest files. Copy. Okay. Got okay. it. Got it. Okay. So that way you don't have to think about it. You just leave it on. And uh, if you ever have an issue, then you can jump in and grab stuff. Yeah, yeah. Unless you did an eight hour plus, you know. Mm, Interesting. Um, Very cool. So there seems to be some confusion. Sky is asking, is it 32-bit? I haven't read anything that it is. Curtis hasn't mm -hmm. either. Um, Robert says the B&H launch video mentioned that you can export as 32-bit, but they're the only ones. I have not seen that video. I feel like that would and have been I have not a the huge, top of that the would, bullet list. Yeah, yeah, that would have been you like the that. number one after, you know, two-channel receiver. And then it would yeah. have been 32-bit float, and then it would have been, you know, onboard or internal recording or something. So um, my guess is we're not getting 32-bit. Besides that, uh, and the fact that obviously it's it's not XLR based. I mean, mm -hmm. there's not as long as the dual channel receiver, which I'm assuming won't have those interference issues because it's designed specifically for those two transmitters and to receive it. Um, I, it looks like a home run to me for a hundred dollars more with an additional transmitter and the recording capabilities, all, features. all the new features. Uh, I, I think it's a win and I actually just had a client order one yesterday. It's coming to them tomorrow. It was, uh, and the original are hard to get right now. They're pretty much all out of stock. B and H did have the the new wireless code. Oh, they're already shipping stock. the new ones. Yep. Yeah, they were in stock yesterday, oh, and they were, you couldn't get the old ones, but you could get the new ones. I'm sure they're out of stock now. I'll check actually right now. But as of yesterday, 
after the announcement, B and H did have them in stock. Um, mm. And, and the, you know, then the question starts to come in: what What do you do when you think about the Tentacle product, and you start thinking about the Zoom product? Do you Do you still consider one of those, or you know, it, I don't know. I mean, for two ninety nine, except for the thirty two mm. bit flow thing, I don't know. Any feelings on that, everybody? Chime in in the chat in the chat. I don't know what everybody's um, thought is. I mean, I'd love to hear Curtis's thoughts on this, but I still feel the goes are pretty consumery, prosumery. Yeah. Um, mm. They're adding you a don't lot think of the pieces zoom that is, make though? it. What about the Zoom? What Zoom? The the, the little zoom. recorder. Yeah, the little one that has thirty-two bit float. The little blue. Right. Well, that, that's that's. I think that's probably a little more pro. I don't know. Road overall until you get into ND, NTG three eight that kind of stuff. Yeah. Land. I feel like. Uh, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but you know, I wouldn't necessarily go with a lot of that stuff. I think it's more of a kind of on their world is more of that on camera prosumery stuff. Especially yep. this kind of thing, right? Their video mics, mm. these. Now, they're super powerful and cheap or affordable from a kind of pro's perspective, if you will. So I think they're still super useful. But, um, I mean, I feel like that 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 Zoom is like a great, like, you know, backup audio source. But these, yeah. you know, yep. whereas some of those other, I don't know. That's my thought, at least. Yeah, we were talking before the show. Uh, it would be amazing to see Road do like a Road Link two, and uh, that would kind of work nice, right? So they've got the Road Wireless Go yeah. to Road Link two, yeah, or Road Wireless it doesn't Go have to be that Pro. Tall. It really doesn't. Yeah, that you can you could double, triple the mass of the the mm. Goes and yeah, load it up with some pretty sick stuff. That'd you still don't get the di you still don't get the distance that you get. When you start to go to with a frequency based, you know, true frequency no, based don't. system like the UWP system, I can go much further. I find it to be more reliable. Um, obviously, the electrosonic stuff is rock solid across the boards. So, yeah, I agree, but I do think that there's tons of people who are using and will continue to use these products for smaller production. And there's just such a huge advantage when you're, you know, getting into mirrorless cameras. And you want to get, you know, you want to get good audio. If you're seeing a mic, it's pretty easy unless you're outside. And, you know, you couple yeah. that with some isotope, you know, magic. And you can get some really amazing results out of these products. But they're, you know, they're no replacement for a good sound recorder, some mixer, who's, you know, running professional cool. mics in there and everything. But that's just a different, different thing. But I could totally see pros using it for certain applications like uh if i had a multi-track recorder and i've got my you know 416 shotgun on an input i've got a much higher quality wireless system on two and three let's say you could in theory take this system which is tiny again the size is ridiculous the battery mm -hmm. life's amazing throw the throw the receiver on one of your inputs and just chuck the other two wireless go transmitters somewhere on set and you've yep. got like amazing like backup audio there's all kinds of ways you can use them it's super cool yep. the other and you thing don't have to use their logs yeah go ahead Sorry. right i was gonna say because they brought out also in the last few weeks they brought out an adapter for using the um the video mic ntg with xlr so they put an XLR adapter on, and I wonder if there's going to be some kind of solution with this for that. Mm. It would make it kind of interesting. Interesting. I mean, I, I think maybe that product is what you're saying, Caleb, which is the, you know, the next evolution of, of their first gen wireless transmitter receiver, yeah. kind of thing. That's where I really could see that happening. To me, the wireless go is exactly what they're promoting it as, and the only big thing I could have seen they could have potentially done is put 32 bit float in there but knowing road they'll do some crazy thing where like three months later they're like aha we have a firmware update and now you have 32 bit float we just weren't ready or something you know i'm not saying they're going to do that but 
they've added a lot of features to their products in the past. Um, yeah. Curtis is yeah. making a comment on what you were saying, Ben. He said that adapter is interesting. Actually, a DI box and a tiny XLR adapter form factor, so you get a truly balanced signal. Yeah, exactly. Interesting. Mm. Betty, Betty, Which is nice. going to make me buy the video mic NTG. So mm. I will now pick that up. Yeah, and I will say, you know, the other day we had we had a, a Sennheiser 600, an, uh, an MKH 416, and we had the NTG in the studio. And there really is no comparison. I mean, once you go to the 416 or even the 600, you know, the, the NTG is is good for what it is and for its price. Um, but you really do. And it's versatility. You know, to me, that's also the great yeah, thing about NT that product. Oh, the, the, the video mic. NTG. Yeah, the, the, the video, the mic. video yeah, mic. Yeah, this one. This video mic NTG right here. It's very useful and it's very versatile, but it's not a NTG5. It's not a MKH416. It's not a six. You know, it's a very different microphone. So, it's perfect mm. for the applications I think it was designed for, similarly to the Wireless Go. But it's not a replacement for those things. But, I mean, chuck it in your bag and the things you can do with it. And, again, if you've got a, if you've got a couple of minutes in post to, you know, open up the Isotope, you know, app or, you know, uh, RX stuff, you can definitely do some, uh, some cool stuff. We got to get Curtis on the show. We'll do that at the, some at some point if he's willing. Yeah, That'd be great. Yeah, absolutely. Good. So, any any more thoughts on these uh, things? It, it, we were having a conversation about this patent or patent, and uh, you know the Zaxcom one, and it seems like people are either getting around it somehow or they're ignoring it or something has changed maybe curtis you oh, could chime in on that yeah, but we've we've got you know a product that's being shipped in the u.s now with the wireless go 2 which seems like it's doing internal recording and external you know output at the same time without having a u.s and you know the rest of the world version um and the zoom recorder kind of is doing that too you know it's got that output um, so I don't know if they're getting around that or the but it's not expired. transmitting because wasn't the patent like something to do with audio transmission and recording some combination of those. Well, I think the two. zoom can because the zoom has the zoom unlike oh, really? the tentacle, the zoom actually has an out where you can have a signal. Um, so the rumor I've heard is that the Zaxcom patent is specifically for removable memory card recording on a transmitter pack. Oh. Yeah, there you go. Mm. So there you go. Well played, Road. Well played. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Very nice. Uh, so. And then, yeah, all right. Sorry, didn't mean to like completely like that's enough of that. <laughs> I just no, no, no. Part. I was read, I was reading one of the comments and I didn't know what to say to digital filmmakers. What's up, my little kitties? I don't know what that means, but uh, here we are. Uh, amazing. Well, come on. What's going on here? Look at this ridiculous twenty-five dollars oh Canadian from Chris Cohn. Been a while since I last watched. You agreeable chaps. Well, we're not always agreeable, but I do appreciate that. And I appreciate the super chat and supporting um, our pandemic drinking, which we're well into now at episode 99. Wink, wink, Ben. Thank you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. I don't know what to say about that. Uh, yeah, uh, $25 Canadian Digital is like... Digital filmmaker it's with not... the zing. <laughs> <laughs> come it's on ridiculous. man it's ridiculous <laughs> it's worth it's at least 10 cents are you kidding no it's not it's much better um but you know what it needs to be a good uh a super chat because in order to go to canada now it costs like 2500 dollars us just to get in the country um because you have to show up and stay in a hotel at your own expense and get tested it's fun uh mm. <laughs> Chris did the math for us uh, on the XE. He said it's really like 35 cents US. <laughs> and then he said, ha ha, <laughs> screw you, Slavic. So there you go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, there you go. Amazing. Beautiful. Love it. All right. All right. All right. Take, take us away. What's next, kids? Come on. Cameras. Sony, let's, let's talk about Sony. cameras. Sony. All right, Sony. Ben. Yeah. 
when you first first of all yeah. i'm sure like me everyone else we're all learning just to skip any kind of sony announcement just go straight to gerald's channel refresh yes done i yeah. i, I Play, commented on played this it video one, i played that, it 1.5 x and then i just get through that thing and i'm like i got it i'm done damn. i am mean, all that. of it yeah I, yeah. I told yeah. him they should just scrap all these live fancy things and just embed his video on their web page and just call it a day. <laughs> so mm. much better than having <laughs> to wade through hour and a half of we're the best company in the world. And here's oh, the thing. I haven't I've just, I haven't ever watched one of their online ones, but I remember the the physical ones at NAB are always what's the what's what's a nice way of putting it? A little corporate. Yeah. I Let's have a big round of applause from Bob, who's vice president of. Yeah, 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 yeah. Meanwhile, everyone at home has already read all the specs on B and H and all the places yeah, exactly. that announced it, and they're moving on with their lives. It's so yeah. funny. Yeah, I yeah. mean, basically, yeah, so... you, just, you you just go to New Shooter and to Curtis's site, and then yep. just you're done like that. You've gotten every piece of information you need. Um, yep. Mm. Yep. Uh, it's a it's yeah, a weird, or, it's as a weird said, thing. or Philip Bloom's to see the artsy documentary film. Exactly. To watch some like I'm... pebbles in a cloudy beach with the broken boat or wherever his favorite place is to film. Brighton, yes. Brighton Beach. That yeah, right. I right, haven't seen this right. one yet. Yeah. Yeah. Uh yeah. It's an odd thing. I'm kind of quite a little puzzled by that camera, really. I haven't watched every review of it, but it, is it not just an A7 S3? Is it not just that's one hundred percent what it is? Yeah. Not awful. Just, I don't they shell. took a sawzall and they chopped off mm. the EVF on top, put in a couple quarter twenty taps, super glued yeah. some LED lights inside, and uh, Bob. And they put put and a zoom rock put a zoom rocker over by the shutter button. Which right. is great for clear image zoom. That's kind of cool, especially if you're using, you know. That yeah, feature. that is sick. Yeah, that yeah, is yeah. cool. Which in the broadcast um, world, mm. like clear image zoom is a whole other thing. For the rest of us capturing in 4K, it's like, eh, especially on that camera because you don't have a lot of reach. Yeah. But yeah. if you're in the broadcast no. universe where you're like maybe doing 1080i p out, that's pretty su sweet. Hmm. It's, yep. I, I don't know. It, I just, I don't understand why they haven't just made that a little bit bigger and put the NDs in. I know that's what every review said as well, mm. but it's just, it just seems a really strange thing. If you're defining what's a cinema camera opposed to a hybrid camera, like to me, that's kind of it. That I don't want to bolt anything else to it. Else to be having to start, you can go shoot video with it and you can't. A cinema camera, you should be able to stick a lens on it and shoot video with it outside <laughs> that's yes that's it i agree a digital um, filmmaker uh, ultimate is, uh, one upsmanship un <laughs> unbelievable and in 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 u.s dollars unbelievable yeah, yeah but you know what's gonna happen <laughs> He's, go, the, he, go ahead i was just gonna say if slavic <laughs> wanted to go the extra mile he would have converted chris's donation to, to u.s dollars then added one cent yeah. oh damn Look at that. Oh my gosh. Oh my god. This is Gross. unbelievable. <laughs> unbelievable. What is happening here? Eat it, Slavic. Race. I love it. Uh, you guys are amazing. <laughs> Just, See, the, the little secret that you don't know, though, is that Slavic will come to my house and eat like $100 worth of food. That's what he's going to do. He'll come up and he'll be like, Can you make another pizza in that pizza oven? Uh, I'd like another beer, please. No, he doesn't say that. He's not that kind of person. Thank you, that's both amazing. of you, Curtis. That's uh, 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 Curtis. These guys are out of control. Uh, what was uh, Curtis well, said something about three blind uh, mice and an elephant for the poetic one? So you mm. go to hear, but Hugh Hugh's voice. That guy. First of all, I don't know if he's scripted or not, but he can just sit in front of a camera and just talk for like an hour with that with that voice. And uh, he's yeah. He really yeah. is the, the like, completely. He's calming. cerebral, though. He's cerebral. I mean, he's 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 got something going on for sure. He's a nice guy. Mm. I feel like he's a poet that got really into camera specs, <laughs> or something. <laughs> you know, <laughs> exactly. You um, <laughs> um, while we're talking about uh, 
Yeah, um, so I just want to go back to a, a comment from Tucker uh, Horan Media. Uh, he said something really cool. Finally made it live. Love you. Uh, love the stuff. Guys, been a longtime Caleb follower, but these episodes have absolutely carried me through the early pandemic days. That means a no. lot to hear, Tucker. And if nobody else indeed. watched the show, it would still be worth it because that's yes, that's that is, great. I, I'm so glad. I, that is an amazing comment. Keep your company. Oh my goodness, amazing! All right, so let me tell you about this FX3. There's no shutter angle on this camera. Boo hoo! Oh yeah. There's there's oh, no there's no real like take a look at the Panasonic camera. We'll keep going back to that. Uh, could we have some professional things like some scopes and stuff like that? I mean, I don't know. I'm just saying, if you're gonna do it, go. <sighs> Looks great. Mm. I think mm -hmm. that you know what what are we really getting? We're getting the fans. We're getting yeah. some quarter twenty taps. We're um rocker rockers lights, LEDs lights. Yeah. What's the price difference between the they, two cameras? So four or five hundred bucks. bucks. What are we five hundred bucks? Right, okay. I think what is going on what? here? Come on. Oh my god. Jared Spink, come on. Spink. Eat it, Chris. Man. I see it's your Spink. C A D and I raise you USD conversion. There Unbelievable. It is. I'm I tell gonna you have what, to get NAB a good bottle of scotch. In October. <laughs> uh yeah, exactly. No true twenty four P. They could have by the way, does anybody know if the A seven S three and the FX three can actually dial in a 148th shutter speed. No, like, I believe I not. Think so. Which is crazy. Like, it's been on the Fuji cameras forever now, and they're not even really video cameras. I mean, they are. Why don't they just put it in there? It's all digital. They could do a mm -hmm. 148th. Why can't we just get a 24 and a 148th? I know it's not that much of a difference, but come on. Mm. If you're going to say well, it's a video camera now, still... what? Yeah. I think the DNA of the processing and that whole end of the camera is still all mirrorless photo land yeah so they're just copying mm. and pasting a lot of that stuff and it's going to take fuji, someone but again but fuji, fuji put it in why? fuji why? put in the 148 i know i don't i don't yeah, know but fuji doesn't have video land it's just fuji land that's true all right but let's just mm. let's just talk about this because they're they're calling yeah. this they're calling this now part of the cine, cine line i mean they're yeah. branding it it's badged that way so at that point you don't really have that argument anymore you have to say, let's right, go 100%. in there and put a few more things in. And now we take a exactly. look at it. It's a, what is it? About a $4,000 camera US. So now the question is, if you spend an extra twelve dollars to $1,500 US, um, you're going to go with a slightly larger camera body, but do the advantages of going with all of the, you know, video slash cinema centric things that you get for that $1,500 and not having to deal with very NDs or screwing on ND filters onto the front of the camera. Uh, what I don't understand, by the way, is the X100 series from Fuji has had an ND filter. It's a fixed ND, but it's been built into their camera now for quite some time. And the X100V, which is just so you don't, if you don't know what it is, it's just a rangefinder style camera with a fixed lens on it. It's a 23 millimeter you know, APS-C lens, so that's a 35 millimeter equivalent. It has a four-stop mm -hmm. ND, which now with the latest firmware update, you can apply to not only stills, but video. And it's four stops. Like a 1.2 to me is the magic. That's like the sort of mm -hmm. sweet spot when you put an ND filter on when you're shooting outside. Um, you can usually comfortably shoot at the 2.8 with a four-stop ND, and you're going to get some nice results. A two might be a little bit too wide. So why can't other companies put, even if it's just a single stage, like four-stop ND into these things, that camera body is absolutely tiny. Any any mm -hmm. thoughts on that at all? I don't know. I don't know. Hopefully this Black Magic camera will kind of spur that on. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, yeah. I, the FX3, yeah, I, I just feel like it's the exact same story as the, what is it, the A7C? Where Sony took a pre-existing camera, you know, cut some stuff off, stapled some other stuff on, and gave us something slightly different. Yeah. Like the A7 mm -hmm. III is, 
or A7C is kind of, I feel, very similar to what they did with the FX3. They yep. took a pre-existing mm. camera, just tweaked it a little bit. And it's it's typical Sony. Like, you know, Canon will have, and maybe Fuji to a lesser extent, Canon will have kind of big jumps, right? I feel like at and they're at an all-time high with their product line, right? It used to be C500, C300. Now it's C500, C200, or C300, C200. Maybe some other rumor stuff. R5, R6, like all these different cameras, right? Where Sony, I feel like in between the typical Canon line, they've have at least one option, if not two. So if you look yep. at Canon's whole lineup, they'll have X amount of cameras. Sony will be it like double that, if at least, you know? Yep. Yep. Uh, and I feel like they're just filling all the gaps, you know, and Hey, there are going to be some people who want this over the a seven S you know, three, you know, yeah, I would think just, so. Eh, well, it also comes with that XLR unit. You got to keep that in mind, you know? So, so oh, it's it comes kind of with the wash. XLR. I didn't realize it came with the XLR. Yeah, it no, comes, it, come, yeah. it comes uh, with it. Oh, then that's, but, I think, yeah. But but the the module that you can buy that goes on the rest of them I can never remember its name is about what five six hundred dollars, right? Yeah, it's a wash that you can put it's on to the rest of the A seven. So you, it's a wash. So you yeah, put that on. This still has all the the same stills capabilities as as the A seven S three. No, it doesn't. So, it doesn't have an EVF. Yeah, there's no EVF. Well, have an EVF. yeah, not from that standpoint, but it can take the still photographs. I'm saying you can use yeah. the LC, you can use the back LCD screen. It doesn't have an EVF, but it has the. the you're losing the EVF. Maybe you're they're gaining, banking on this yeah. right here. The uh, <laughs> the button text change. That's what people yeah. wanted. Yeah, that's Let's right. Let's be honest. Yeah. I want peaking zebras and shutter. Which is hilarious that shutters on there because they don't have the shutter okay. angles or anything. So then, what's the so if you were going to make the decision right now, both of you, yeah. um, and and you were you know gun to your head between FX three and A seven S three, which camera would you buy? A seven S three all day long. Um, for me, A seven S three just because I don't use Sony's audio solution. If I did I would go actually with this camera because it would you know come with that and I never use an EBF but again I have a very specific use case see I work outside quite a bit and the EBF I yeah. find massively useful a lot of the time and that's a big deal to me so you, you have that on you can still buy the um the XLR module for that camera I don't know it just seems an unnecessary thing it's a bit weird It'll be very interesting to see what happens with this camera. Uh, it would be a lot of fun if the price just plummets because they can't sell them or, mm. you know, over time, you know, yeah. three years from now. Actually, on Twitter, uh, Dave um, Altizer tweeted, like, this is the FX3 is the kind of camera Caleb's going to talk about in six years. I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was funny. And that, that, th that's when this camera years. could be a great option. Yeah. But, yeah. but that's from a rigging uh, perspective, yeah, it's kind of yeah. cool. I, I appreciate it. It looks nicer. Aesthetically, I prefer yeah. it over it's the pretty. A7. It's very pretty. Yeah. But but it is four grand. And you're talking about jumping into yeah. C70 and FX6 land for not a tremendous amount more. Obviously, very different cameras. C70 being a super 35 millimeter sensor, but the interesting thing is that Canon makes their own speed booster now for that. So you're getting effectively mm -hmm. a, a full frame, you know, field That's of view well. as an option. Yeah. Um, it's a hard call, but I would say that when we're talking about dollars and cents, and let's just take the autofocus capabilities out of this conversation for 30 seconds, this black magic design, you know, pocket. 6k pro camera is a yeah. really interesting camera for 500 dollars more than their previous 6K out of control camera. it's fun out of it's control. so and, much and more camera for for 500 dollars and just and from a practicality point of view as well as obviously the the nds which is the headline thing but just it's ugly as shit about 
let's be honest. Well, of course, I it's, mean, a, it's, and it's, it's and it's massive. But having that battery solution thing now a little bit more sorted, a bit more thought out, which has always been like magic's just always ridiculous decisions made in the in the because they're always taking yeah. they're not doing their own they're always taking a third party battery and they've just made ridiculous choices with it going right back to the original cinema uh, pocket cinema camera the little micro four thirds mount one with the n- <laughs> nikon <laughs> five minute think, batteries uh, literally yeah eight minutes that's what i got out of mine eight minutes out of one of those things so you're They've always made these slightly bizarre decisions. So they're now going for the the MPF. It's the five fifty equivalent size one, which is the slimmer it's the, one. So it's the baby one, yeah, yeah. So that kind of makes more more sense. And with the battery grip thing, but the battery grip thing makes it pretty tall. So I mm-hmm. think that then. So they're saying you get three hours out of it with the grip, but I don't know. To me, that makes the thing just even more unwieldy than it already is. And it's already quite a big chunky thing. Um, it's a bit of an odd form factor if you wanted to put it on gimbals because it's very wide is the first issue. So a lot of it doesn't actually fit in the cradle and it starts banging against the arm. Uh, counterweighting, if the gimbal's strong enough, you can you can do that. But you then start sticking that battery grip on the bottom of it and that raises it up. So you're going to be taking that on and off a bit. Hmm. But... You know, that's a minor gripe. I think for what that camera has in for the money, given that it's got the Blackmagic RAW, which is obviously yeah. a, a huge, huge, huge thing. Uh, I think it's amazing. If that, if that, so there's still nothing that quite ticks every single box. But if that that had decent AF, that would be over. Uh, that, there it that is. Now, be, and that's six K image. What's what's hmm. up? No, that's now. Now we're talking about the. AF again. Now it came back in. It was a matter oh, yeah, of yeah. time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that 6K yep. image, what? The the 6K but, uh, is, I mean, anyone who shot on the 4K, you can't compare that to the 6K. It's a whole different everything with the image. The sensor, color, everything is so much better on the 6K. Uh, it's a real, another kind of downside is on that camera in particular, Unless you shoot raw, you're going to get hit with some gnarly crop stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, because you need to be shooting in... Uh, if you shoot... Uh, in other words, if you shoot in ProRes uh, and you don't go with... Well, there's not a 6K ProRes option. Right? If I'm remembering correctly, it's all... I don't know. I think it's 4K for ProRes. I, I think you, I think yeah, you get... Yeah, so you're dealing yeah. with a lot of crop stuff. Um a lot of crops um mount i'm still not wild about the fact that they went with canon um, unless they went rf mount I, that would have been interesting exactly that that would have been the yeah, smart move but I, gone RF. yeah i mean it, from an engineering standpoint canon works great because it's probably more affordable easier to do and there's tons of room in there but it's kind of yeah. sad from a lens perspective yeah it's not like they have great autofocus then they need it but nope yeah so, can you power that camera off a of power delivery USB C? No. So you are beholden to the battery solution. There's no. I mean. Well, there's there's a there's a 12 volt locking connector on the side, and you can okay. use all kinds. But of But there's stuff no that. there's no sort of really small powering solution for that camera. Like you know when you're not, most yeah. Yeah, not okay. that I can think of. I you could do something like I, a power I junkie. Know. I was going to say a power junkie or the or the new blind spot USB C cables, which can then uh, all that clever right. stuff in them. Yeah, that would change the voltage yeah. yeah, yeah, and on the mm-hmm. demand stuff. So you put that in, and then I think it's a limo. Is That's it a limo true. plug that it uses for the power? Kind of. It's like a three pin limo. Yeah, limo style. Yeah, limo. yeah. So. He, there's there's ways of there's definitely ways of doing it or of obviously dummy batterying it particularly if you use the grip you could stick one of those in you've got sure yep I'm not well grip is a non-starter for me it's no it's, it makes it tall. way too big i don't know yeah, what's going yeah, on with I you agree. tommy you're coming in here talking about cameras and not lights it's kind of freaking me out a little bit there's been a lot of camera <laughs> there's been a lot of camera talk on your site lately i have to say there's a lot of camera talk i don't mind it but i'm just saying i love how his, his main thing he's been touting forever is don't buy cameras, buy lights. And he's all up in here buying Komodos, 
selling his, his Komodo because he's, he's yeah. not man enough, man enough, so he's buying A7S3s. I'm just kidding. I'm just giving We're just giving me a hard time. <laughs> so, Rip Tip should be up in here like, don't buy cameras, buy C-stands. That's what I want to yeah, see. Exact, yeah, super yeah. clamps. Mafers. Uh, Mafers yeah. all day long. Buy a Mafer. Um, see, he sold the Komodo and bought a, a Titan X2. So there you go. All there right. You go. Nice. You know, practicing what you preach. Okay. Props. So yep. buy clamps. There you go. All caps, exclamation point. I want two more exclamation points on that grip tips. So mm-hmm. I would say for me, when I look at that pocket camera, I mean, look, it's if you can get, if there's not an autofocus requirement and you are a DaVinci Resolve user, um, it's almost a no-brainer. You know, if you're yeah. going to shoot in 6K in Blackmagic RAW, then they've got color signs worked out now. They've got a really nice image coming out of the camera. I will argue that their user interface is probably second to only Airy. It's so easy to use their Great. cameras. I think their menu systems are fantastic, and, you know, they really work well. They're very well thought out. And they've got the flip-up screen now. Flip-up screen. 1500 nits. Yep. That's a super bright screen for a billion. That's amazing. Twenty five hundred bucks for this camera, and then the proper a, EVS solution. A, a proper EVS solution for five hundred dollars. So for three thousand yeah. dollars US, what proper ish? I'd say I mean. decent. Yes, it's I'm got not the saying one hundred. Poke yes. your eyeballs out. It's you know? <laughs> it's not. It, the, it comes with uh, three additional cups, so you can put those. Oh, on it does. There. Oh, yeah, it has four all together. Take it back. So they have four different cups that you can use. Some of them are very large, so they have a really nice eye cup solutions. Um, It's glass, and it's supposed to be good. I'm not expecting it to be anywhere near as good as their EVF that you use on the Ursa Mini Pro, um, which is a great EVF for the money. But for $495, you're still at three grand. You can add batteries all day long. You can add, you know... Uh, probably a cage and everything else. And it, at $4,000 US, which is essentially the price of the FX3, if autofocus isn't the requirement, then, you know, it's a hell of a camera for sure. It really is. And it, it has really built-in is. NDs. So you've got, you've got a clear, a two and a four stop ND in there, hence the bigger camera body. So... Two XLRs, although... Yeah, yeah, but C seventy is the same. I I think we're we're not getting away from that now. In order to make the camera body smaller, those are the Mm -hmm. compromises you're making. Um, (laughs) I'd argue there's a room on that body full size ones in it. (laughs) I'd argue there's enough room on that thing to put full size ones on, but you know there might be. But you know, then you're I don't know. It's still all right. Yeah. (laughs) But does it fit Um, in your pocket? Cargo yes, pants. quite. Yeah. Hulk pockets. Yeah. Um, yeah, I if I were doing corporate video again, I'd probably lean into this one. Um, mm. Yeah, because, you know, weekly content is a different story. I don't got time to be transcoding or doing any of that if I'm sticking with Final Cut. But if I was doing the, you know, job here or there, I'd totally jump into that. Compress raw. Even if I had to transcode it, you yeah. know, just pull it all into Premiere, do a quick the, raw the pass. The raw things, that's, that's a huge thing. It's such a, yeah, you can hey, keep all the original raw footage. Yeah. yeah amazing. I mean, I, I we were talking about, just before we started, we were talking about new cameras. I know, Jim, you were talking about new stills cameras and things. And I know we've been talking about, um, I, I've been considering chopping in the C200 for a C70. I've decided not to do that because I've shot the last two projects on the C200 in RAW and it's just beautiful. I don't need another yeah. camera. I just need to start shooting everything in RAW. And if I need to transcode everything down to ProRes before I start cutting it. For, but for the most part, that's what I'm just going to be doing now. But it is it is hard drive eating. You know, that's That's the main issue with it. So that compressed raw that they that Black Magic have, yeah, that's a huge thing. I thought it, I would if if that thing did decent AF, I, I'd be all in. I'd be buying. Well, a we keep coming back sure. to that, and I mean, I think that that is really you know we're going to beat that you know to death. But the reality is that a lot of people require 
a, a very strong AF system nowadays. That said, um, two uh, pocket pro cameras, 6K pro cameras for less than the price of a C70. And they're yeah. very different cameras, but you're talking about two of them. And if you if you match those up with the ATEMs, you have camera control. So if you're in a studio type of environment, then that's pretty fantastic is you can open up that software and you can actually focus the cameras, you can paint the cameras, you can do all kinds of stuff with the cameras, with the ATEMs. Um, you are maybe down to five frames per second over there, Caleb. You might want to bump out for a second and come back in. I don't know. Yikes. Something's going on. Um, okay. But it's uh, it's it's really getting more difficult to decide what to do when you're investing. Um, I don't know. Uh, let me bring you in, Ben. Here we go. Boom. I'll get rid of that. Boom. Um, what do you what do you think? I mean. It's so hard to make decisions on these now. Well, it is. It really is. Um, I think a lot of the decision making for for, for, the, for the all the cameras that have been released in the last six months, a lot of it sits down to your, I suppose, what you have, the systems that you're invested in, in terms of the lenses that you've got. Which I know we say every time new stuff comes out. I mean that, but the, the, we're kind of spoiled for choice. Um. And 360 makes a good point. If autofocus isn't the requirement, <laughs> in inverted commas, in every second phrase, as Jem said, <laughs> it's an issue. Well, yeah, it kind of is. Uh, and I think the market that, um, that that camera is is going after is the kind of people, the kind of people who are going to be shooting one man bands. And I think for a lot of us that that are working in small to no crew productions, the AF is 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 a big thing. It's a big selling point. And I don't know, I, I've never experienced a really good AF system that works from uh, between a camera that's made by a different manufacturer to the lenses. Right. That makes sense. I mean, I, I know obviously Sigma lenses work great, but with Canon systems, but they're an EF mount. I've never, I've never gone through a converter that's worked flawlessly. So I, I think that's still... I don't know why oh, Caleb can't out. come in. Yeah. Uh, link hasn't changed, Caleb. I don't know why. I'm going to send you the link again and see what happens. That's weird. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, when you're talking about you're talking about systems as a whole, there's so many different applications. And when you're talking about, for instance, corporate, corporate can mean many different things. But if you're doing events and things like that, and you're into, uh, you know, that kind of stuff, you're not really needing AF when you're shooting no. an event. You can, you know, if you've got enough light on the stage and everything, then you can, you can basically stop down, you know, and, and usually you're fine. Just give me a second here. Just keep talking. I'm trying to get uh, a link well, to I Caleb to see if he can come back in. Of course, and I suppose, and also, if you're doing a lot of interview stuff, you don't really need it for that. You just need to set the thing up properly. I just, and and really, it's only been in the last few years that we've had also focus for video that's been reliable. Um, so, it, it's not a huge issue for everybody. I think for me personally, you know, we do a lot of stuff, do a lot of tracking shots. This thing we were shooting in the UK uh, a few weeks ago, which is hopefully coming out next week. Um, that's you know we were doing tracking shots and being able to being able to do that you know vehicle to vehicle tracking shots over windy roads and be able to do that with lenses more or less wide open gives right. a really nice it gives a really nice look and I've kind of got used to it and and I would I would hate to be without now so yeah definitely not a requirement for everyone but for the stuff I do I've come to rely on it quite heavily I think yeah so. so so, I mean, obviously the FX3 fits in terms of that, but you don't get ND, which I, I rely upon. I mean, when I go outside now, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's pretty critical. And it is harder when you're on a mirrorless camera that doesn't have ND. It can be something that gets in your way. And to me, the big problem is when you go multi-camera. Because as soon as you go multi-camera, mm -hmm. if you want those two 
um, if you want those two cameras to match outside, you really have to use fixed NDs, same brand of NDs, you know, have those two cameras set up the same way. As soon as you go to very NDs and you're, you know, changing your, your ND, yeah, yeah. it's well, never going to match exactly. So, you know, that is definitely a, a, a situation. Whereas any camera that has built in NDs, you just say, okay, everybody's going to go to four stops and we're going to shoot at a, you know, at a, at a two, eight, or we're going to shoot at a four, or we're going to shoot at a five, six. And, Pretty much everybody, as long as they're set up the same other than that, you know, the cameras should match. So, um, yeah. which which brings us back Agreed. to the A7S three, brings us back to, you know, a camera that does not seem to have any real overheating issues anyway. Here's Caleb coming back in. Um, and he's here. I will bring him back in and we'll go back to our normale setup. Um, but... You know, I just feel like, hold on, Caleb, I'm bringing you in. And bingo, there you are. What happened, Caleb? We can't hear you, that's for sure. You came back in, your video's in, but we can't hear you. Sorry about that. Should be oh, back Oh, that's now. awesome. All right, great. Um, yeah. yeah, it was really strange. Very strange. Um, so I don't know. We were just kind of wrapping up and talking about the fact that there are, you know, different horses, of course, well, for different applications. But just to pick up on something, digital filmmaker, since you were talking about ND and the issues with using very NDs if you've got two different cameras because they're never going to be the same. And digital filmmaker saying, "Well, an ND filter built into the lens adapter seems to be the solution." Well, it isn't. It isn't because they generally tend to be very NDs as well, which have that same that same issue that they're not going to look exactly the same because it's it's polarizers and they do weird things depending on the angle that you're at what what will be the the changing point will be adapters that have the electronic varying yep. these in when I that, mean, when that happens that, that solves problems honestly i think it all comes down to demand they can totally do all this stuff of course every, every single company can uh it's just you know why because we've always had cinema cameras with it and you know no one else is doing it but i hope that black magic doing it is going to be the beginning of other people doing it cuz now it's yeah. all it's going to take is sony or canon yeah. not canon let's be honest <laughs> or fuji <laughs> someone to be the first not like first person with decent autofocus and all that other stuff to just be like let's do it you know yeah and maybe that's canon or maybe panasonic's the company to do that as a limp along until they can get into better autofocus but uh, yeah i i think sony could then all the dominoes will fall i think that honestly so what is an fx9 now is it coming in still at about ten thousand us about mm, i don't know um, something and, 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 and how much is the fx6 5500 ish six six thousand yeah. All right. Six Here's... grand FX six. Nine is eleven. Okay. I yeah, don't know how so... it is in like the the nine the nines are different in terms of Europe or certainly UK. The FX nine is going to get you work. Now, that camera is high in demand mm. for owner operators. Yeah. Rates. Yeah. That that's oh. not. I, I think my the, the thing that I was trying to say was that if the nine came in at eleven, and when they released the six, it came in at around seven grand U.S., then Sony would have had an opportunity. And we're just talking BS here. Yes. But if they yeah, had yeah. said, "Okay, here's a camera that's forty five hundred to five thousand dollars. It's called the FX three, and what they did is they made the camera body a little bit bigger, and they put their insanely good electronic nd system that is a very nd exactly. system electronic into that camera that yep. one thing alone and maybe throw in shutter angle into there in the menus those two things for me would have made all the difference in the world in that camera um Absolutely. because you know that's and, and even if they didn't put the shutter angle in there if they had just put that very nd in there their their thing I don't know. Um, I just felt uh, that's what I would have hoped for on an FX3. 
would have been a, a 4500 yeah. to 5000 dollars camera but they can't really do that when they're selling their fx6 for a thousand dollars more than that yeah, yeah i think you're totally right that's a great point if they if it was 45 100 bucks and it had nd you're you're all day great. long so you i got think the they a7s thousand dollars to move up meanwhile you know yep. yeah i think it would have would have been good and that and that would have been a c70 the ki- competitor as opposed to some weak sauce and to me that would have been the killer feature because you get if you have an a7s3 with nd especially yeah. if it's that dial up you can pull nd like you can with their fx line and their fs line that to me would have been the sweet spot because they've already got the autofocus sure. they've they've now put cine tone into both the fx3 and the a7s3 uh, with the firmware update, right? So mm-hmm. they seem to be getting skin tones yet, a lot better. With the A7. I've heard it's released. Maybe happened, it's man. not. It's definitely coming. I know it's on the way. Yeah, I know it's the, uh, the cine tone, The cine tone being added to the A7S3. Oh, right. So, yeah. I think a true professional would use minus 1600 ASA, especially ASA, mm-hmm. not ISO. That is mm. definitely a, prof- a professional speaking. All right, kids, here we are again. Um, amazing Super Chats today, I have to say. Great to see everybody yes. back here. Um, I don't know what the hell we do next week. I, you know, it will, be, it will be technically, or maybe not technically, the 100th episode next week. But I think I, it I be think, a bit. I think on that, I think, I think we, we, we shall agree that next week is 100 and we move on from there with 100, 101, and we just let bygones be guy- bygones with the, the rest of it. Let's let's call an amnesty on the numbering from next week. Next week is mm. episode 100. Let's not look into it any further, and let's do something. Yeah. Right. I think maybe we should have spe- special drinks, maybe. Something. Yeah. Mm. Not, yeah. We should have special drinks, and uh, we should... I'm not going to do shots, because I'm too old for that now. I was going to say. <laughs> you were about situation. to suggest it, though. You're like, no, let's do. Oh, no. Yeah. I'm not going to do, do it. Let's do that. I like Gorsha. Gorsha Jolly comes in. Thoughts on new Black Magic camera? Uh, replay. <laughs> that's my answer to that. And that's the replay. Nice. So let's Maybe make for, the reflective. For, for nostalgic sake, I'll uh, set up at the house with something with a higher alcoholic content. Yeah, let's do it. So next Back week. the old messy. Three, basement studio i'd love it yeah for old time's sake 3 p.m pacific yeah. time uh drinks with umbrellas no mannequins don't be cheeky i know that's coming in soon as a comment and do a variable <laughs> scotch episode i don't know what that means <laughs> but it sounds delightful <laughs> Maybe I'll, I'll mix different scotches together and see how it tastes we are on the same your lazy page. susan yes all boom, your boom. little baby <laughs> t- testers Ridiculous. Uh, For ep- uh, revi- revisit the first episode topics. Maybe. Uh, can you do a little homework? Everybody I feel do like a we little homework. Do a challenge. I don't know. You want to? It, it's a. I, well, I feel like we have to. We haven't done one in so long. It's the one hundredth episode. Okay. What's okay, Caleb? You are now tasked with what our challenge is going to be. Oh boy. I happen to have a little bit of extra time this oh. week because yeah. Go ahead. Uh, I just realized I might not be able to make next week. On after, after all of that, <laughs> sorry. What? <laughs> the wife and I have been planning a, a much needed getaway, and uh, we're still nailing down the final flight information on the return. When? When so will you know that? Be, uh, I can get you a text tonight. Okay. Oh, you're allowed to fly places. I'm so jealous. Sorry. You better I'm, go somewhere oh, good. I'm also you know, I'm I'm a yeah. blanket on top I'm, of this I'm whole party. And, I'm disgusted with you in in equal measure. <laughs> well, we're not we're not doing uh, we're not doing episode 100 uh, without all three of us. So that's definitely not happening. Mm. So let us know. No, well, where, well, we, yeah. So next week could be 99B. Yeah. It's just you and me. <laughs> it's just you and me just getting, getting on each again. other's case like a couple no, no, of old grumpy farts. I have a great idea. Next week, somebody figure out how many episodes we've done, what actual what the actual numbers are, and then uh, fill in fill in the blanks. Call it like you know episode 
and then all the ones we missed or skipped all all together. I, I think the problem think is that the episode. It's yeah. the other way around. I think we have multiple episode like elevens. Mm. I think that was the that okay. was the thing. Never mind. We can tell. That's all right. We can do. We can do a ninety nine. We can do a ninety nine B until you're back. That's all right. Yeah, as we've said, one hundred is a resetting of the numbering system. Yeah, clock. That's fine. Got it. Oh, all right. <laughs> the comments are just getting their uh, yeah ninety nine and a half. I'll go with Jared with the ninety nine and a half. I think that's perfect. Um, yeah, we can do that next week. Jared, you're the you're the second spink that I know who's a filmmaker, by the way. Um, so there you go. We got a couple in the house. Uh, perfect. Slavic, behave yourself. Jared, Chris, uh, everybody, thank you for the amazing uh, chats today. Camille, also in there, as always. So everybody, um, did I thank everybody correctly? I think we had Chris in there. We had Slavic going crazy with his little one-upmanship thing. And then we, uh, it just got, it got beautiful in there with Jared coming in. With thirty nine dollars and ninety seven cents US, with an eat it, Chris, love it. That's the way it should be, kids. Um, until next week. <laughs> it's getting it's getting bad in the chat. Thanks for everything, everybody. Enjoy your drinks. Have a good week. Work hard and uh, enjoy your family and your friends. See you. Bye. <laughs>